Hey, John, how's it going? This is Ryan with TrendLizard.com. Great to hear from you. Uh, I got the email you sent to me. I'm going to take a look at three stocks for you tonight. Uh, we're going to take a look at Kinder Morgan, KMI. We're going to take a look at Devon Energy, DVN, and then Roku, R-O-K-U, in that order. Uh, we'll start with KMI here. Uh, and By the way, a lot of these were interesting and tricky and had to be looked at uh, in several uh, from several several different points of view, so maybe that's why you sent them to me, but I will do my best uh, to present the full cases and then just kind of what I think is going on. So here is KMI. It was incepted back in early 2011. Uh, had a nice up move here, but then really got crushed in 2015. Recovered from there, crushed again in 2020 to retest that low, and then has had, has had a nice recovery off of the 2020 low. Now, there's two different ways that I can see to label this on a longer term time frame. Let's look at them both. One possibility is that you had a, a nice, sharp, trendy five-wave down move here, and everything since then off the 2016 low would be an A, B, C recovery. Obviously, this is a bearish outcome. It would portend another down leg that moves below those lows that were recorded back in 2016 and 2020 uh, as another down leg shapes up to the downside of five-wave down move. That's one way to label it. If price moves below 1250 at any point in time, I would have to think that this is the case. Let's look at the other possibility, and that would be that this was wave A, this recovery was wave B, and then he had a C wave, retested, wave A's low, uh, could have been bigger, but just wasn't, and then everything to the upside since then has kind of paved the way in a new uptrend. Now, I'd love to be able to say this is exactly what's happening, but I can't, and it should be clear why, because I'm showing you two different options here, and neither one of them are uh, impossible. Both of them are possible, and so both have to be considered. So what we can do is just kind of focus in on what's happened off the 2020 low and uh, kind of basically go with the clues that are provided from that move uh, to see where it takes us. So let's go ahead and zoom in. Now, when we go into the 2020 uh, recovery, the recovery off of that low, again, it, there's not just one uh, simple way to be able to label it. I find two ways. I think one way is more probable the un than the other. The first way is here, uh, wave one up, second wave down, and then all of this as a wave third, uh, a third wave uh, with a fourth wave pullback. The thing about this is this fourth wave is approaching wave one's high, so maybe a little less probable here. Uh, the other way that I think is a preferable labeling uh, is a first, second, third, fourth, and fifth completed, uh, the whole thing being one large leading diagonal because even with this labeling, that first and fourth wave overlap. So either way you do it, you're probably looking at overlap. But I think this makes more sense. And if we zoom in on this downside action in 2022, what we find is what looks like a trendy downside move. So to me, the likely outcome is we're going to get a larger pullback off of June's high. This looks like a down leg that's not yet complete. We should get a larger recovery at some point, but the thinking has to be this is just the first down leg of a larger pullback. So if we put that kind of into the larger time frame, it makes more sense if that larger pullback uh, is correcting this entire advance off of the 2020 low. And we're seeing that in several different places. So that kind of makes sense that this would be the first leg of a larger pullback. As that pullback develops, if it gets below that 1250 level, as discussed, it's going to point us back to uh, this labeling here. Much more bullish, we'd have to expect that the downtrend that started way back in 2015 is not yet over. If instead... Uh, that recovery can stay above, or the pullback stays above 1250 um, here after we get this next down leg, um, then the potential will be there. Let's see if I can find the right chart, chart here. Um, that the, the, the larger pullback was over and that this is the resumption of the uptrend. So bottom line, a lot, a lot of different angles there, but I think what we need to be looking for is a larger pullback off of the 2022 high. If that can stay above 1250, then I think you have a chance that this is a very important low in 2020 and that this is the first leg of a much larger recovery. If that pullback continues to grow and gets below 1250, that's your problem. Then you have to look at it as uh, part of a larger down move from there. So long-winded way. Uh, hopefully that makes sense, John. Let's go ahead and move on to DVN, Devon Energy. Uh, let's take a look at this guy. Now, uh, judging by what we're seeing here uh, and its advance off of its inception back in 1992, this looks like an incomplete five wave up move. There's no other way to really label it. Uh, that would be just kind of a completed five wave up move, but that's okay. Just because it was incepted here could have been a first and second wave that happened before its inception. However you want to look at it. Bottom line, what is clear is that an important high was recorded in 2008 
and a much larger pullback, one that retraced it, retraced the vast majority of this up leg here, uh, came to be. And because of its size, we know that there probably was a larger up move that it was correcting. But maybe even more importantly is the look of this pullback very clearly a counter trend move. You see this first down leg here is an ABC wave A, and you had a larger B and a larger C. So when you put it all together, really no way to label this as a trendy move. And that has really proved true as the advance off of the 2020 low has retraced the vast majority of this downside action here. So those are all bullish things. We have to think on a very large time frame. Devon is still in an uptrend. So let's go ahead and zoom in on the more approximate price action here. Now, looking at this action, again, I like to have full disclosure, not just present one thing and assume that that's the case because there aren't always just one uh, way. There's not always just one way to label things. That's okay. We can still get valuable information. Um, let's look at this way here. Um, I guess the, the short of that is that I can find two ways to label the advance off the 2020 low. Uh, the first one is here, first and second wave, and then all of this action being part of a, a big blue third wave that is not yet complete. I have the pullback off of the 2022 high as a smaller degree fourth wave. The other way I could find to label that is calling it a larger degree fourth wave, basically this, the fourth wave to offset the second wave. Either way, I think what we can agree upon is that this pullback in 2020 has not yet been matched by a larger fourth wave correction yet. Maybe this is the start of it. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's a smaller degree fourth wave. We'll find out as it goes. Uh, but the important thing is the advance off of that 2020 low does not look like a completed trendy five wave move, and it should become one before it's over. So I think we can say the advance off of the 2020 low does not appear to be complete. Now, it does need to ultimately stay above about 34 to keep it that way, but it doesn't seem like that'll be an issue. Um, so that's kind of where that is at. Let's go ahead and zoom in on more proximate action here. This looks at the downside action off of this high here in 2022. Think about this and the thing that we're seeing across the energy sector that these down legs look trendy. This looks like a trendy move. So the implication here, because this looks like a five wave trendy move, is that it's probably just the first leg of a larger ABC pullback. So this would be wave A. We would expect a larger recovery, a B wave, and then another down leg, a C wave down to give us a larger three wave move. And if we put that into the context of the larger pattern, it would make more sense to call this a larger fourth wave because it does look like it's going to become a larger pullback before it's over. But basically what we would be talking about is an A wave down that's probably nearing completion. A lot of times these things end right at the top of the yellow support area, which in this case is around 51. Uh, that would be followed by a larger B wave recovery and then another C wave down deeper into the yellow area. And again, as long as that stays above 34, um, it's going to look like a fourth wave with a fifth wave up yet to come to complete a larger fifth wave advance. So just like the last guy, uh, but this one's a little more clear, maybe a little more tradable. Um, Got to be uh, expect a larger pullback in the near term time frame, but overall points higher. So there is that guy. Let's move on now. Let's look at the last one. We're going to take a look at Roku, R-O-K-U. So Roku is another one where just it doesn't appear as if we're seeing the full story here uh, from its inception. It looks like this is basically the end of a larger uh, five wave move that has completed um, and you can see the labeling we have here. Basically, there was a, a third wave up that ended fairly close to when it was incepted in early, or excuse me, late 2017. Then you had this clear ABC pullback and then a one, two, three, four, five, really short fifth wave. Not ideal, but after what has happened since then, it's apparent that that is. And then if you look at this yellow support area here, you can see this massive pullback off of the 2021 high, which is substantially more than we would expect if this was just a correction of what we've seen here. So it makes sense to think that a larger five wave move completed, and this is a larger degree move, and there are mother, uh, other reasons to think that as well as we zoom in. So if we zoom in on the pullback off of the 2021 high, pretty hard to ignore the fact that this looks like a very clean uh, five wave decline. It could be over. We could be at the start of a larger recovery. A move above 115 would support that possibility and would point higher, potentially as high as this yellow support area that runs from about 225 to 325. Obviously, that would be a very substantial gain. Uh, unfortunately, anything that happens to the upside here, we would have to think is a counter trend move within a larger pullback because we have the all time high here. And then off of that high, we're getting trendy downside action. No reason we'd be getting trendy downside action unless this was the start of a larger decline. So if there is a recovery, it should be a counter trend move. Here's the other problem with 
uh, being bullish in any way here. If you actually look at the recovery effort so far, it's just been a sideways affair. It's pretty hard to get excited about this or to consider it overly bullish in any way when all we're getting is net sideways price action. These are decent swings, but if it's unpredictable, it doesn't matter. It's not something that we can really play with. Now, what you might have been interested in this guy is the look of that recovery off of June's low has a general five-way form to it. Maybe that means it's the ending pattern to this sideways action and price is getting ready to turn lower, or maybe we're going to get a larger uh, recovery up into this yellow area um, as we go. But it's a pretty hard one to trade unless, you know, we get a clear five wave move, a counter trend a pullback that stays above 82 and you get a near, near term setup for higher prices. You can trade that. But on any larger time frame, again, it looks like a setup for a larger or a larger pullback here. And that's what this would look that, that's what this looks like here. Uh, the, the five wave down move off of the 2021 high would be wave A and then the larger recovery wave B, but then we would expect another big down leg for wave C. So again, hard to be bullish on any larger time frame. Maybe you get a setup on the shorter time frames. Pretty hard to buy it though, honestly, unless you're a very short-term trader and ready to bail because it's tough to trade counter trend moves. There's no doubt about it. They're much less predictable, especially when you have a trendy, clear five wave decline on the charts. Uh, just prior. So anything that happens to the upside here, we would have to expect to be pretty choppy, ugly move because that's how B waves play out. So that is what we're looking at, John. I hope that is helpful. Uh, always a pleasure. Have a wonderful week ahead. And uh, for anybody else watching this, come visit us at trendlizard.com. We do this stuff all the time. It works. Obviously, the market's pretty rough right now, but we can try to do our best to keep you safe uh, until the time is right. Uh, to get more involved with uh, the market. So have a good one, y'all. Talk to you soon. Take care.